and gentlemen. That's why I am here. Uh, I thank like you for coming to our special board meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to, uh, excuse me, attention, thank you. Uh, let's start this uh, properly. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to the meeting. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Madam Secretary, call the roll. Charles Fitzpatrick. Here. Marvin Town. Here. Francis Mesro. Here. Mark Richmond. Here. Colin Gosselin. Gerald Merrow. Here. I will go up. Jerry Drusigny. Here. Sean Here. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, the purpose for tonight's meeting is to give you, our membership, the opportunity to meet your new management company. This board has taken many, many, many weeks, in fact months, um, in the selection, the research, the due diligence of coming up with the decision on your behalf to hire a management company. The name of the company we did select finally is called American Management Group. Uh, their offices is not very far from here on Flamingo, very near to Sawgrass Mills. We are very, very pleased uh, with our selection and uh, we will answer your questions after, but I will tell you this. Uh, because I'm not sure Jonathan is going to um, um, tell you, but at the present time, uh, to run this organization administration-wise, it was costing us about a hundred and sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars a year, and to replace just our property manager, we would have had to bring in somebody around sixty thousand dollars which would have brought our cost to about $180,000, $185,000 a year. Uh, we were able to uh, negotiate very, very well with Jonathan. We were able to negotiate very, very well with Jonathan. And after uh, some uh, squeezing and hugging and laughing, uh, he was uh, kind enough to say, okay, I'm prepared to bring my cost down to bring myself into this community because I believe this community is worth my time. And uh, it's approximately, uh, I'm just gonna put my glasses on so I don't get it right. The cost now would be $153,000 for everything that basically we have now but beyond. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of details because I'm gonna have Jonathan um, really talk to you. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you, Jonathan Louie, the CEO of American Management Group. Jonathan, take it away. Thank you. You know, our goal is to make sure that you're still clapping in a year. <laughs> Turn it on, right, Jonathan? Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, my name is Jonathan Louie. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, this is why I don't go on American Idol. <laughs> you know what, I'll stand back here. It should be a little easier. Um, thank you all. You have a beautiful community, and uh, we're absolutely delighted to be able to start managing it for you. Um, I've been doing this for a little over 35 years in five countries and 12 states. I was primarily with hotels for many, many years, Hyde International in Singapore, Brussels, Chicago. Um, for those of you that are from Chicago, I, I opened the uh, East Tower, the main Hyatt down there in Wacker in Michigan, and also the Water Tower Hyatt. And um, opened also the uh, Sheraton Beijing in China, the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, and the one in Greensboro, North Carolina. Been doing this for a very long time, um, and uh, in Florida, we currently manage, actually prior to this, I was in Massachusetts, where we had 275 employees, and we were based on Martha's Vineyard, for those of you that have been there. Um, we did most of the hotels on the vineyard, managed about 56% of Nantucket's total real estate, and condo communities, condo hotels, country, and from Kennebunkport, Maine, down to Bonsable County. Um, 
since I've been in Florida, we now manage about 9,000 units. We are what you would call a medium-sized company. I have an outstanding team, and we use nothing but veteran property managers. The criteria for us is not so much whether a manager has a CAM license, because that really is a technical skill, and after taking a 24-hour course, uh, you can pretty much go get your license. The criteria for us is someone who has a strong background of financial and property management. Whether it be in hotels, uh, commercial, whatever it is, we want to make sure that they have the hospitality end, which is a little hotel flair, that they're used to a medium to luxury end style property. And the fact of the matter is, you have a beautiful property here, and you have to have someone who's on the same page as the vision of the board of directors. So what I hope we bring to the table is a hospitality management team um, led by my Vice President of Operations, Carl Olson, who spent the last 13 years um, as Area Director of Operations for the Waldorf Astoria Collection, um, which was bought out by uh, Blackstone, as many of you may know, and he left them after 13 years to join our company as VP of Operations. So you're going to see myself and Carl Olson here a great deal. Um, we're basically working with the staff. We're going to shuffle a few people around. Um, there will be less people in the office, but we're hoping to give you a lot more services. Uh, we're developing as we speak, and it should be ready in about a week to 10 days, a fully interactive website, so that when you go online, you'll have documents, you'll be able to check into your own account, look at your own account transactions, make payments online if you need to. Um, I brought about 50 welcome packages. This is a very good turnout. I wish I brought more. But um, these are being mailed out to every single one of you, so you'll have them this week, probably within the next couple of days. And it clearly lists all the email addresses, telephone numbers, websites, people that you need to contact or be able to get hold of if you have any questions. Um, we offer 24-7 emergency service. We always have a manager on duty. We manage properties from Miami Beach up to Pompano Beach, and we have an equestrian ranch in Ocala. So what we hope to bring you is some nice, quiet, peaceful enjoyment and some value-added services. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to do most of the grunt work that the board has, has had to shoulder for quite a few years now so that they can have some of that quiet, peaceful enjoyment as well. And when we go to a board meeting, what they're going to look forward to is a manager's report that is very concise. It lists all the projects that have been accomplished, projects in play, and items requiring board action. If there's a project in play or there's something requiring board action, and if it's a bid, chances are it will be accompanied by a request for proposal. It'll have a comparative summary with all the bids attached so that they can compare apples to apples and make an educated decision. Um, no matter what the board does, they'll never be able to assign the responsibility. What they're assigning is their duties, and that's what we hope to be able to help them with. Um, we have a lot of uh, contacts in the industry. We've been able to leverage a lot of savings for many of our communities. And last year, we were one of three nominated in the country for uh, the Award of Excellence for Fiscal Innovation, um, because we continually save our communities our management fee plus. Um, in Pompano Beach, you have a 289-unit oceanfront property, absolutely gorgeous, and we're basically paid for for the next year and a half in the savings we brought them in the first six months of last year. So these are some of the things that we hope to bring here, and I really hope you're still clapping in a year, but that's, that's going to be one of our goals. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. I will uh, now uh, open the floor to questions to either to the board members or to uh, uh, Jonathan. Please, any questions from the audience? Yes, Paul. What are you going to do about preventative maintenance to stop uh, stuff coming down from the roofs and flooding the area? Uh, we have, we have um, a, a team of people that are working with us. And uh, one of the things that we mentioned to uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick is that we will have a master plan put together. Uh, we are addressing some of the more urgent issues first, but basically what you need here is a master plan. And walking around, we can see where you have some drainage issues. We can see some spalling concrete, a few things that we've noticed right off the bat. Um, but one of the things we also bring to the table, by the way, is that when you need 
a plan drawn up for you. Um, there's usually no cost of association, and we'll bring in one of our experts, whether it be an engineer, a, phys a structural engineer, or a mechanical engineer, and we'll draw for you a plan. But if you don't have, if we don't have a master plan of this community that'll basically encompass the next four or five years, you're going to be trying to take on projects haphazardly, and you might have to redo a project twice because it should have been done, the, you know, the first time. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to lay out a plan for you, and the manager. Rest assured, the manager that we're going to bring here, we have two selected, and the board's going to decide which one they would like to go with. They both have years of experience in this business, managing, uh, one of them is a general manager of a, a hotel for the last several years, and he's gone through multiple renovations, and, and he's also been in the condominium business for quite a while. We have another gentleman who's managed some of the top condominiums in uh, Florida that's, that's um, going to be coming up to meet. So, what you're dealing with is a, a level of expertise to where we will make sure that we immediately react to the problems that you have now, but the goal is to set up a preventative maintenance plan, uh, which we do in, in many of our buildings. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the Pinnacle Condominium in Sunny Isles Beach, we've been there for five years. Um, they absolutely love us, um, and, and uh, we love them. And so these are some of the things that we'll certainly tackle. And, and by the way, if you have issues like that, you have to bring them to the attention of the manager, and you will also be able to do that online. And in addition to the website, we're also bringing online a system where you'll be able to create a service order, and then you'll be able to track that service order so that if the maintenance, you know, the maintenance person or the manager is not following up on it, you'll see exactly where it goes. So you'll have an opportunity to keep track of some of these things. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. Madam, please. I just want to say one thing. Over two years and a half, my building don't have a sign Mark Grenoble. The people, them come in, and them is running all around and looking for Grenoble. I, I've been fighting with that lady over two months. She told me that, well, I am not here for two years and I give out the sign. Two months gone, and there is no sign there. And We've gone months. halfway. We've gone halfway. We actually got the addresses. <laughs> so the address will be attached to your building uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, next question. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Harriet. That's all I want. <laughs> That's the new man. Please, quiet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I asked to inquire, since now the employees that were once ours with holiday and vacation pay and sick leave are now possibly going to become employees of this management company, what happens to their benefits? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, all we're really going to be doing is alleviating of the liability of having employees. At the end of the term, let's say in 35 years, the board gets tired of us being here and they terminate us, they still have full rights to all the employees. And that's the way it's scheduled. As it relates to benefits, that's something I have to discuss with the board, but the way we normally do it is that if someone's been here um, operating for, they, they maintain the benefit, it continues, it doesn't stop. Now, what, I, what we do bring to the table is a much, much better and cost-effective benefits program. Uh, we carry Aetna. And the employees will be able to choose from any one of three plans, which are good anywhere in the world. So whether they're traveling in France or anywhere in the United States, they'll still be able to get that medical attention when they need it, if they select that plan. Yes, please stand up and, uh, hey Phyllis, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Um, I'd like to address what you spoke about before, that you will have a master plan as to uh, going forth what's going to be done. I know from past experience, we have suffered with a lot of temporary uh, fixing up of things, and nothing one goes one place, the next day something else is broken. This place is many years old. It really needs to be brought up to code for plumbing. It needs to be brought up uh, electrically. Do you, how long would it take you to prepare a master plan uh, for what it would take to bring this community up to code 
and what kind of expenses involved and what would it cost us to do that and in what time frame would that be? Where we're actually in the process right now of coming up with a cost to put something of, of detail like that in place. Um, the, we're, we're doing a general summation of the property. Now, as you may recall, Broward County and Miami Dade both have what is called a 40 year recertification. In that recertification, they primarily focus on mechanical, electrical, plumbing, issues like that. So it's not always necessary for us to go and inspect each individual unit. We can look at a sampling of units and extrapolate what it's going to be based on experience. We're going to leave that to the engineer. Uh, time, phrase wise, time frame wise, I'm going to give us about 30 to 60 days to come up with a decent plan that the board can then either decide to move forward with or not. And then the detail will build from there. Once they approve the, the basic structure of the skeletal structure of the plan, then we can go and get the detail because we don't want to overwhelm. We have to be very careful. We're going to be very careful on cash flow, and we're going to try to bring savings to the table at the same time that we're putting it where it's needed. So we've already brought some, what we believe are going to be some substantial savings to the table, and, um, and in the meantime, we're still going to be working on the master plan. So give us about 30 to 60 days to, to have a really good plan presented to the board, and uh, then they'll be able to take it from there. But we have to be ready for that 40-year recertification. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Please stand. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Tisela. I live in the Orleans building. I've been having a big problem. In my first floor where I live, uh, there was a person in the apartment 1A one, uh, one that uh, was a hoarder, and uh, he died recently and had left the apartment with full of garbage up to half of the wall. And I've been complaining about this forever now because my hallway smells real bad, and that and that garbage is still there forever. And I want to know what anybody in here going to do about it finally, because I, for what I know, it still is the same way as it was before, and nobody has done anything about it. And I'm dying with the smell in the place. Okay. I you like me? Yeah, go I think one of the first things we're going to, I'm going to be here tomorrow. So I think one of the first things we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to make that one of my projects tomorrow. We're going to go look at the apartment. We're going to go in there. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to assess it. And we'll get it addressed. And that to me is a priority issue because that, that could be a life safety, could be a number of issues involved. So we will address that immediately tomorrow. And, and this week, there will be an action plan in place. Over a year now that I've been after this, for somebody to do something else. Well, the, the beauty of the system that we're putting in place is that you'll be able to go online and you'll track it. And our managers get evaluated based on how, how the turnover of the priorities is. So One of the things, uh, Jonathan, excuse me, one of the things that uh, really attracted us to AMG uh, was uh, their dedication to tracking and following up. Um, it's been so long and too many years that things have fallen through the cracks within this organization and hopefully, hopefully, uh, at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, the threat <laughs> of me jumping your bones, <laughs> yeah, we will uh, hopefully get a system in place, uh, not only verbally, but computerized, and that was one of the attractions we had. I would like to know if any of you at the board who would like to live in my apartment with another apartment next to you that would be in that kind of situation? No one, man. Nobody. Not one of us. Not one of us, and uh, uh, we will make sure that we will... Um, there's many in this room that will attest that when I say something, it will get done. And I will promise you, you have my word, that in the next couple of days, that will be addressed. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes, Michelle. Yes, Michelle, go ahead. Please stand up. I have two questions. Um, you're going to do all this online access and things like that. I have no issue with that. I think that's great. My concern is there's a lot of people that live in this community that A, do not know how to use a computer, B, they don't have a computer. So that's going to be an issue. How will they address their issues or complaints or have a way to track? 
Uh, the easiest way to the easiest way to do that is to actually just speak to the manager. You're going to have a manager who's going to be walking this property, and we're going to determine the staffing levels that are going to be needed. The, the thing that we're going to do is we're going to treat the, the we're going to treat this as a business. You're a not-for-profit corporation. We're going to treat it as a business. We're going to find the money to spend it where it's needed. And what that'll do is that'll allow to make sure that issues like this are taken care of. If somebody doesn't have access to computers, they have other access to make their payments. They have other access to notify the manager. Um, there will also be a very responsive team working in the office that'll take care of your needs. Uh, we handle a lot of, you know, we, we handle communities from, our smallest community is 150 units and goes up to 3,700 units. So we, we, we found ways to handle things like this. And we are in a couple of communities where computers is not the way of life. So, so I understand what you're saying. But there will have to be a method whereby somebody can either pick up the phone and call it. And it'll be tracked. They'll open up the top system. They'll register the work order. And then from there on, it gets tracked. So it's just the way we do it. It's not, there's not going to be a lot of paper. We're going to do everything digitally. By the way, the other thing I wanted to mention is our manager will have a tablet or a smartphone. The entire top system is right on his phone because we use Tops Go. So when they go to your building and they bring out the tablet, the GPS will actually bring up your building and every unit owner in it. So they can do all their violations and work orders right there on the spot. There's no need for them to go back to the computer or write it on a piece of paper that then gets lost at lunch. So that, that's how we'll handle it. And my other question, is some people have asked questions that I was going to ask. Um, do you have someone that actually obtains grants with the, the Obama and the other things? There's a lot of grants out there for solar energy, things like that. Um, we, when you're talking about obtaining grants, are you referring to obtaining it for the association? Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, that has not been a priority for us, but I have obtained grants in the past. Uh, we don't have someone dedicated to that. Um, you know, we've, <laughs> it's funny you should mention that. Uh, being a small business, um, we've had to suffer some of the consequences of what's going on right now. And uh, we don't have the luxury of being able to do that. But we have the people, we have a we have a 120 person company. Um, and we, if there is something specific that you'd like us to look into, we'd be happy to look into it for you. Basically solar power for the clubhouse. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, well, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Well, a second question. But I would like to know when Orlean is going to be fixed. I, to my knowledge, I know that there have been a lot of buildings that have been renovated, but Orleans is in a very bad shape, and nobody has done nothing with it to try to improve it. Okay. I'll take you there. Um, every single building needs to be renovated. We are going to get to every single building. I cannot give you a detailed plan as of yet. Uh, we have not really sat down and figured out what our costs are. I've asked Jonathan and his company to go around to every single building and do a financial audit of what it's going to take to do each building. At the present time, as you well know, um, our maintenance is lacking because we have maintenance people working on our renovations. And uh, uh, two things uh, are the consequence of that. Number one, we no longer have maintenance people. And number two, they are not the skilled workers we need to do proper renovations. So I, one of the things that this board has asked of ANG is to uh, bring out, uh, in fact, I met the gentleman last week and uh, he has walked all the buildings and he has uh, promised to come back to us very shortly with a detailed plan exactly what it's going to take and what cost to do each and every one. <coughs> Does that answer your question, ma'am? Yeah. I'm sorry, I need, to, I need to add other people. Uh, I, know, uh, I know, I know. I only think it's fair that if you, the association, have done some of the buildings, Maybe because somebody from the board is there or something? Thank you, ma'am. So we, we all understand that, and we're just saying to you that we are going to treat every building the way it should be treated. Next question, please. Yes, Stuart. Stand up, please, Stuart. I pay my maintenance and assessment automatically. Are we going to have to fill out new paperwork, or will it just be uh, taken over? Probably new paperwork, I would assume. 
<laughs> You're correct. If you do uh, autom an ACH withdrawal every month that happens automatically and goes to the association, um, actually in here we have the ACH authorization form that you just need to fill out. So every every or time you have... Bring it into the office. Sorry? Mail it or bring it into the office. Either way, whichever you're more comfortable with, you can also email it or fax it. We have all the information on what to do with it here. No problem. Yes, Judy. Are you going to have coupons? Stand up, please, Judy. Are you going to have coupons for those who don't do that? Yeah, we have temporary coupons in here for the month of for this month. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, you will be mailed your coupons. You will have it cool. within the next couple cool. of weeks. Thank you. For the rest of the year. Cool. Any other questions? Yes, Phyllis, go ahead. Um, general question. As far as I understand, our water bills are in excess of over six hundred thousand dollars a year, which is very exorbitant. Being that drought. Eve, please. Eve, please. Uh, Go ahead, Phyllis. Broward County is offering free toilets if you uh, practically free toilets. I got two free toilets to conserve on water. It seems to me such a golden opportunity for all of our residents to do that. I feel like it should be mandatory, being that they're going to get it for practically nothing. Why don't we take advantage of it? Is there some way to get a consensus of the whole? community, whether it's an amendment or something, yes, it's an obligation of the owners to update their conserve water because it's such a precious commodity. Okay. I don't know if there's a way to do it legally. Phyllis, I'm going to answer that. Uh, because it's, it's not fair for Jonathan to do that, considering that he's only been around for a week. We have made a concerted effort to try to have everybody in the village at least change their toilets. We made the effort to bring in experts in the Broward County. We made an effort to allow the county to come in and provide you with a grant. And I will tell you what the response has been. 11 toilets. So um, we made a big effort um, to convince everyone in the village the extremity that we're facing with our water costs. I will tell you that we, this village will have some sort of announcement very shortly on what we need to do and how we're going to do it. But for now, we don't have the answers. Until you, all the residents, step up and decide on your own to change at least your toilets, allow us to come into your units, verify your water problems, it is going to be a continuing albatross around our neck. It is not the responsibility of the board to tell you that you what to do. We can only provide you with the means. If you cannot volunteer, step up, talk to your neighbors and say, hey guys, we need to do something. Our water bill it's not inconceivable that by 2014 that we're paying, please sit down, Frank. We will not, we will be paying bills of a million dollars. A million dollars. And that is, excuse the expression, flushing it down the toilet. Yes, Frank. Hey, guy, I volunteered. <laughs> I volunteered to two out of my own pocket. You know that. Yes, sir. So it's not 11, it's 13. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Love you. Yes, sir. I did six. Six. Terrific. And we got two. So look, it doesn't matter. We have 832 units. Uh, we know that over the next the last two or three years, we've had people like myself and Eve Gagne and Doug Myers and, and Elise that have come in and bought units and have upgraded the units. But there's still a whole bunch out there that have not. And you need to talk to your neighbors and say, hey, there is a program out there and eventually it's gonna cost you. Yes, Stuart. Uh, back to my original question now. You didn't mention April. April, normally the fifth, the sixth, they take it out of my checking account automatically. Obviously, the papers didn't even go out, so they, what's going to happen in April? It's being, I, I, it's, it's being done normally right now as, as we speak. We actually just started uh, today. So there'll a, be no change. They'll pull it out the same way. They this month yeah, is not going to be an issue. you're fine this month, Stuart. Okay. Everything's yeah. the same for this month. Uh, Stuart, we decided to charge you double. <laughs> no problem. No problem. 
Sample. Yes, sir, Mr. Henderson. I have a suggestion on your toilet dilemma. If you tell all of the new rentals... Stand up, please, John. If you have 25% of all the people in here are renting, right? Anytime they want to do a rollover le release, yes, they can with a new toilet. Right? We're trying to do that as part of our orientation. Or it's part of the orientation, Marvin, right? When we're talking about water conservation, yeah, we are. But there's still a lot, a lot of owners that have been here for many, many years that don't feel that it's important. Uh, but we'll change that. It's, it's going to take some time, but it will change that. Jonathan, go I, ahead. I, I'd just like to address the water. Um, while we're working on a strategy with the board on how to alleviate the situation, or maybe hopefully greatly reduce it, we also have some other strategies that we're going to put in place that we can do immediately. And, and it ties into the preventative maintenance program that the gentleman is referring to. And one of them is, is you know, actually going into the units. In, many, in almost all our condominiums, we set up preventative maintenance plans where our maintenance teams go into the units and check the flappers and check the leaks and check for different things that can be done that can be fixed on an ongoing basis. We have to understand the, the logistics of what's going on here, but those are some of the plans we're going to put in place immediately, um, pending board approval and pending costs. So, the, you know, there's other little things that we can do, like the pool area, you know, separating them from the main so that you're not paying as much sewage and things like that. So there are things that are in place that the board has already discussed and understands and strategies that we're putting in place. Does the board, does the board have the right to do that? Oh, absolutely. As a condominium, um, because the condominium association is paying the water bill, you absolutely have the right to go into a unit at least once a year and, if necessary, change the flappers and do all the kind of preventative maintenance things you need to do to save your water bill that you're paying as an association. And on top of that, Jerry, it is on our docks. Right, so it sounds like a simple matter. It sounds like a simple matter. The buildings are there, they're not moving, and they're in alphabetical order by floor. So it's just a question of starting, you know, and doing it. Absolutely. Yes. My question is, why haven't we done it? What, what seems to be the impediment to having it? Jerry, I think that's an unfair question to Mr. Uh, Louie, uh, well, since he's just being, he's saying that he's going to be not, doing that. Not necessarily to Mr. Louie. Okay, it's we haven't done it because we, we never followed up on it, Jerry. That's the bottom line. Uh, any other questions, please? Yes, Judy, stand up, please. Um, for this month, there'll be no late fees, right? With the coupons and everything? Because we didn't get our coupons. If you, if, no late fees this month, I've just been told. Any other questions, please? Um, Marvin has a question, Mr. Tao has a question. Jonathan, uh, when will the violation procedures be in place? Um, I would say within 30 days of the new manager starting. Okay, so... So I'm guessing by the end of this month we'll, we'll be in full swing. Oh, by the end of this month? Yeah. Okay. However, we are not going to stop what we're doing or that we already started now. No, not at all. Maureen and I have sat down and have put out violation letters, violation plans. Uh, however, I'm as you know, thank God uh, Jonathan and his company are going to step out, uh, step up uh, to operate the day-to-day -day, and myself and Mark Richmond and hopefully Francis will take some time off. Uh, we'll be able to step away now and let the professionals run this organization. You have to understand we're a four million dollar corporation and as of uh, you know until today uh, I won't call ourselves amateurs but we're not the professionals that these uh, organization is. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Michelle. Stand up, please. How do you handle your collection process? Uh, well, Jonathan, I'm going to answer that. The collection process is not going to uh, change. Uh, it is staying in the hands of our attorney, uh, Chris Trapani. That's one thing that we're not changing. But, uh, my as question of right. is how they handle getting the information to and all that process. <coughs> It's, it's tied in. Usually the way we work with attorneys is we, uh, we actually give them read-only access to the uh, top system. So they have access to all the unit owner ledgers. And there is a standard operating procedure that once the board approves it, it's either a one letter or a two letter before it goes to the attorney. That's something that's going to be decided by the board. Uh, this week, in fact, we're going to be turning over the standard operating procedures for collections to them. Once they approve it, at whatever stage, it's turned over to the attorney. The attorney then also has read-only access to the community, and they will be able to look at the ledger and get all the details themselves, and they'll take it from there. 
But everything is done through us. Everything is monitored. The so we have the responsibility of maintaining the association's records, so I have to make sure that everything that this association does is maintained safely, securely, and in one place. Uh, one of the things that we have done in the past uh, and that uh, Jonathan has uh, pointed out is that we have not done very much until someone falls 90 days in delinquency. And Jonathan pointed out to us that why wait 90 days? The moment someone falls one month, 30 days delinquent, this is when they should, this is when the process should start. So basically that's, where, that's, that's one of the changes that Jonathan is gonna be bringing into this village is that we're no longer gonna wait 90 days. We are now gonna, as soon as they fall into delinquency, they will be notified that they are delinquent and there are other means that I am not able to discuss right now because the details haven't been worked out. But I assure you, the next board meeting, you will have all the details. Um, Any other questions? Yes, please? Uh, yes, follow, Jerry. Following up on that, I thought at the meeting, the, the interview that we had with you and, and your partner, uh, that you indicated that you do collections in your firm. Is that correct? Uh, we do, and we've also turned that over to the board, and the board's going to make a decision as to which way they want to go. But what the collections that we will be doing, let's say your payment is due on the 10th. I, I don't have all the specifics, because like I said, we just started today. Let's say that the payment is the due. The payments are due on the 1st and the 15th. On the 1st and 15th. So it's, it's due the 1st, late after the 15th. On the 16th, between the 15th and the 20th, all the late letters, will, courtesy late letters, will go out, reminding people, oh, by the way, you, you haven't made your payment. This is the amount you owe. And everything is customized to the unit. So it's all mail merged from the, uh, from the top system. And they're going to be given to the end of the month to make the payment. If they don't make the payment at the end of the month, one of the SOPs that we present to the board is that they're then given a final notice which says you've got 10 days to make the payment, or unfortunately, we're going to have to turn it over to the attorney. During that 10-day period, is, is usually a time where you try to, you know, and you also in the letter offer to, you know, make payment plans, do whatever is necessary to help the cash flow of the association. So during that time, if they still don't pay it at that point, after that it's turned over to the attorney, and the attorney then by law has to send out a 30-day notice of intent to create a lien. Well, I guess my question really is, is your collection activities included in the fee that you're giving us, or is it that if we use you for collection, there's additional charges. No, it, when, when you say, I'm, I'm gonna clarify what collection means. The first two letters that we mail out is included in the fee. So the only thing we would charge you on that would be the uh, postage and, and whatever it is. Um, and that, that's probably gonna be done from the office because it'd be the most effective way to do it, so then there wouldn't be any postage. But we'll make sure that that system's in place. Once it goes to the attorney, the attorney sends his charge. Now we've presented a couple of options to the board, but I, want, I would prefer that the board had a chance to meet, discuss it, review it, think about it before, before it was. They are not a collection agency. You're not a collection agency. No, no. no. we work with one, but we're not. Yeah. Um, Mr. Noel, please stand up. It's way too loud. Recently I had presented to you my Speak up, please. Yeah, uh, recently I had presented to you my concern regarding the lawsuit for Mr. Milan West. I don't know if you had address that issue on the board or, or what preventive action you will take to women. So I believe this thing has become a business for Mr. Elon. I don't know how you would. Uh, uh, Frank, um, the, the, the situation with that right now, excuse me, Gloria, the situation with that right now is in the hands of our attorney and uh, has nothing to do with the management company whatsoever. We have made a settlement with Mr. Weiss. Uh, there are certain certain criteria that we must follow and he must follow and uh, basically uh, that's the situation right now. Uh, I saw a hand up. Where did I see a hand up? Me. Yes, Gloria, stand up please. I want to know if you're going to do something about the barcode. So many people didn't even want them two years and they don't Gloria, uh, I, I will have to excuse you, but we started a program. Uh, Mr. Elwood, uh, please stand up. I appreciate it. He will confirm that about, what, three weeks ago we started a barcode program and we identified was with 4042 um, residents in the village that did not have a barcode and they all have barcodes now. The only people that we cannot adjudicate at the present time 
are people in foreclosure. Okay? People in foreclosure cannot be adjudicated in any way. But there were residents for a lot of reasons. They were lazy, they forgot, they didn't know, they thought it would cost a fortune. But we were able to identify 42 automobiles that did not have barcodes. And out of that, we identified three. 16. 16. The, the, the delinquent and three that um, basically. Right. 16 delinquents and three illegals. So um, our barcode system is, uh, is solid right now. Solid right now. Any other questions? Yes, please, Michelle, stand up. walking right on through yeah. that I know don't belong on the property. Okay, and I'll say, excuse me, could you stop them? And they just let them walk Excuse me, through. Michelle, uh, as I emailed you uh, this over the weekend, the management company is not managing our security. Uh, this is an in-house issue that we need to deal with, and uh, we are looking at some solutions. Any other questions? Any other questions? Good. Uh, Jonathan, you have any other things that uh, you want to say? Not at this time. Then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please stand up and welcome our new management company. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, is, um, it is now 10 to 8. I call this meeting to a close. Thank you.